We're going to be speaking today about the actual conditions in, in this region, in a desert environment, and how we actually deal with them. But what I want to spend a lot of time on are the way the environmental challenges affect performance in this part of the world, <coughs> and the methods that, you ha that we have with our technology to handle those environmental challenges. Um, so the first, um, before I start, I want to just give you a brief overview of what GlassPoint's technology is. The main innovation in, in the technology is to take standard parabolic trough mirrors and literally place them indoors. So we have a glass house, as you can see in this picture here. It's a standard agricultural greenhouse that we put parabolic trough mirrors inside them. And that protects them from the environmental conditions, which I'm going to be speaking about uh, today. The other part of the system which is really important to note is the automated washing. So we have a, uh, a roof washer that washes the system every single day. It's completely automated, recycles all the water. And the last part that's important to note is that our system has been designed specifically for the oil field environment. Now the oil field environment is very different from the power uh, sector. And so what we've used is standard oil field equipment. So we use standard oil field separators and pumps and piping, <coughs> etc. So what are the environmental challenges? Uh, the first one is wind. The wind in, in this part of the world is pretty strong. It's not your typical situation in, in, in sites that you can pick. In the power industry, typically, you can go and you can select a site which has ideal conditions. In the oil and gas industry, you cannot select where the oil is. You're stuck in the site where the oil is actually uh, found. In our site, we've seen that 90% of the DNI that's available happens at wind speeds, of, wind speeds above 4 meters per second. And we'll talk a little bit about how that wind affects performance of standard systems. The other environmental challenge is dust. Uh, dust affects performance in CSP systems a lot more than it does in PV systems. We've seen performance drops uh, ranging about 5% if you leave it for just a couple of days without washing. And these are actual recorded data in our, in our system. So if you are not keeping the system absolutely clean all the time, again, your performance is going to drop. And the third thing is when you combine wind and dust together, you get our infamous uh, dust storms that are here in the region. And those happen quite frequently. So you need to be able to withstand them, not just survive, but operate as well, all right? So looking first at DNI. <coughs> this chart here is pretty interesting. What we've done is we've taken our site, which is Amel in, in the south of Amman, and we've accumulate, accumulated all of the DNI data and correlated that with wind speeds. So what you'll see over here is, is the red part of the chart is whenever the wind speed is greater than eight meters per second. You can see that's about 40% of the DNI is occurring at wind speeds above eight meters per second. If you were to take Spain, for example, that's less than 5%. This is a site in Spain where there, where there are some CSP plants. Looking at it differently, if you were to look above four meters per second wind speed, 90% of the DNI in our site is above four meters per second. In Spain, above four meters per second, you're looking at less than 30%. All right, so it's not just that you have to survive, but you have to be able to operate and you have to be able to deliver the performance that you're promising in the windy conditions. And so it's a very important point to keep in mind. Now, why is it that you have to be able to withstand the winds? CSP is all about accuracy, right? So if your mirror is not perfectly accurate, you will very quickly reduce the performance of the system. You cannot concentrate the sun's energy, therefore you cannot produce the heat that you need. So you literally have to withstand that wind and deliver. So what happens in a windy environment? If you take a standard parabolic trough system, I mean, these images are, are exaggerated, <coughs> but they show you the forces on the actual mirrors. You have your bending, you have your torsion, and with those wind forces, you're literally distorting the shape, and therefore, very quickly, you start to see drops in performance. Now, those drops in performance, uh, I've taken a study that was in the public domain. It's a little bit old, but it's the only one that I could find in the public uh, domain that shows the Eurotrough 4, Eurotrough 6, uh, performance drop when you have certain amount of wind. And what we did here is we said, what if you were to take that exact um, performance curve and put it in our site in Oman? So in the south of Oman, 
we are not affected by wind, clearly, because we're indoors. So we get 100% of our, of our performance, no matter what the wind is. But if you were to take the Eurotrough systems that I've shown here, and again, the study's a little bit old, but um, it's, it's relatively accurate, you end up with about 8 to 14% drop in performance. So it's not just what the, what the system is rated at, and doing all your LCOE calculations on that, but then you have to account for how much of that DNI is going to be decreased because of the wind conditions. So again, it's not about surviving, but it's about delivering the performance that you promised to deliver at the windy conditions. Moving on to, to how uh, that affects the structure of the system and the cost of the system. In a typical parabolic trough system, every single row has to withstand the wind forces. Right, so every single row has to have the steel and the concrete to withstand the wind and maintain accuracy, back to the main point, which is accuracy to get the performance. When you put everything indoors, everything changes. The only wall that has to withstand the wind is the front-facing wall. And because it's a glass house and it's extremely large, I mean, these, these glass house blocks that we build are roughly 300 meters long. So the entire glass house can withstand the force. So we can withstand hurricane force winds. And the glass house industry, the greenhouse industry, is you know, decades old. It's not something that we're developing newly. There are greenhouses on practically every single continent in the world, even in Florida, that they can stand hurricanes. So it's, it's something that we did not have to develop. We just went out to the market and we bought it. Now, the advantage, again, comes back to the fact that the front wall withstands all the wind, so everything on the inside is perfectly wind-free, extremely light, and extremely accurate. So the next part of this whole discussion is how, do we, how did we design our system to be most, most cost-effective? So in, in, a, in, a, in a typical parabolic trough system, you need a lot of steel, a lot of concrete. You're typically looking at roughly 30 kilograms a meter squared of, um, of aperture area. In our system, because it's all indoors, our mirrors can be a lot lighter. It's literally 10 times lighter. So instead of 30 kilograms a meter squared, we're looking at 3 kilograms a meter squared. That helps us in a lot of different ways, not just the cost involved in the mirrors themselves, but also in construction and assembly. You don't need these cranes to install every single you know, trough on its own. You literally have people picking them up. They're extremely light, easy to use, uh, and extremely high precision. So no matter what the wind speed is, you're always at 100% of your performance. The next part in this whole discussion is on dust. So dust comes in, in two forms, and, and, or in, in, there are two different parts that affect us. It's aerosols and the soiling. You can see in, in this chart over here, um, it was actually a video, but it's not playing. This is from NASA showing satellite data of actual aerosols and soiling in, in the world. The, you can see the dust belt very clearly here, right? And this is the part of the world that we are stuck in. So you have to be able to withstand it and, and deal with it. So. The dust belt, like I said, we all know how dusty it is over here. So how do you manage those conditions? So moving on uh, to the next slide, what we've shown here is, again, actual performance data from our site in Oman. Uh, what we found is you can see 5% decrease in performance with just two days without washing. Right? So just two days without washing, you're decreasing performance by 5%. It goes up to 7% if you leave it for three days. And um, data collected from a paper here in Abu Dhabi shows that if you leave it for a week, you can get 15 to 17% decrease in performance. Right, so these are really significant numbers. If you leave your system without washing, you have a drop in performance. So again, coming back to the main point, it's not just the system performance and the rating that is you know, claimed, uh, but it is how that is changing in the environmental conditions. So how do we solve that problem? It's always clean. We have automated washers. So it's a wet wash with brushes. It's very, very powerful. It cleans the system every single day. The water comes off the roof and is recollected. You can recycle it and use it again. So it's very, very low water consumption. Um, and what that does is it keeps the system clean all the time. We wash it every single night, whereas typical systems, because of the size, because of the method that they clean it with, we're using trucks and, and water. You cannot capture the water, and you need skilled operators, and you cannot clean it every single day simply because it's just too much to do every single day. 
So the last part of all this is sandstorm operations. We operate literally in the middle of a storm. So you can see over here, if you look straight ahead, you cannot see, there's no visibility. But if you look up into the sky, you'll notice that the mirrors are actually on sun. So they're producing steam during the sandstorm. On the next slide, so that the first one was April 2014. This one was in February 2015. Both sandstorms were extremely challenging. You're looking at wind speeds upwards of 14 meters per second. The gas-fired boilers in the oil field actually shut off because they were scared of the, f of the actual flame blowing out because there was so much wind. We were the only boiler on the oil field that actually stayed operating. <coughs> um, so looking at the data, just really quickly... 100% um, is our performance rated. During the storm, we went down to about 85, 90% of performance. So typically on an average day, we get 50 tons of steam. During the storm, we produced 48 tons of steam when the wind conditions were more than 14 meters a second. All right, so we don't have to stow, we don't have to do anything. <coughs> so the last part, just really quickly because I'm running out of time, is what happens when you put sand and wind together? All right? You have an extremely abrasive force. So the, the part to note in this image, which is really interesting, is look at the size of the person and notice that all the abrasion is happening very close to the ground, right? This is real, right? Sand and wind will literally tear apart systems that are exposed to it. So you have rock that is being, you know, literally torn apart. But as you notice, the higher up you go, the less abrasion there is. So um, how does that affect us? You have large particles close to the ground that cause all the abrasion. But in our system, um, our optical surface is six meters above grade, right? So in a standard system, when your mirrors are close to the ground, I mean, the picture here is of, of a Fresnel system, which is roughly a meter above the ground. Other parabolic trough systems are relatively closer to the ground. You will have sand abrasion, right? Now, there are ways to solve that. You know, you try and build a wall to prevent some of the wind. But when you're building large systems that are literally spanning square kilometers you cannot stop sand abrasion. Eventually, the specular reflectivity of the mirrors will decrease, and you're going to have performance degradation throughout time. So you have to be able to solve that problem. The other thing in a glass house is because your surface is flat, six meters above grade, you have laminar airflow, right? So the particles hit the glass wall at the front, and less than 2% of the energy comes in through the glass walls. So it's, you can literally make it out of brick and nothing will change in the performance. But above grade, it's laminar flow, so you don't get any sand abrasion. So that allows you to deal with these conditions all the time. Um, on the next slide, just to summarize and sum up, um, our pilot has been operational now in Oman for over two years. We constructed it as an EPC contractor. It was on time, on budget. A very important factor in the oil field is HSE. So safety is, is, a, is a clear concern for the oil field operators. We have no incidents uh, as of yet. It's been a year of construction, two years of operation. And we've exceeded all the performance goals that the oil company PDO in Oman has put on us. It was a pilot project, so there are very strict uh, targets that we had to meet, and we've passed all of them already. And uh, I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer that. Thanks. Okay.